Volvo and Rolls Royce, they got together. Don't know how this happened. They got together and they said, you know what? Let's build a charger, an electric car charger that operates from burning wood. So you start a fire, light some wood up and um, charge your electric car. And this got me to thinking, it's kind of a good point. Imagine if you could do this in the outback. Imagine if all you needed was to charge your electric car was to have a fire. Could that work? Well, personally, I think it'd make more sense to have a big rollout solar panel. That's just me thinking out loud though, guys. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. So what was the reason for Volvo and Rolls-Royce deciding to come up with this idea? Well, I say in remote locations, it's hard to keep construction equipment fueled up, regardless of whether that fuel is liquid or electric. So a lot of mining locations, places a long way out in the middle of nowhere, could be even like small places where small amounts of work are going on. They thought, well, you know what? Rather than deploying solar panels, batteries or wind turbines, why not just, you know, burn some wood? This is the first of its kind so-called biocharger from air burners. And it's going to make that job a whole lot easier. Now, is burning wood really all that uh, eco-friendly? Yeah, I mean, they call it a biocharger. Personally, I don't think it is, but they say it is. So what's what are your thoughts on this? Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. There's a saying in the construction business says electric that goes. You might be working for the power company, but that doesn't mean you have power. When you're tasked with clearing trees, blazing trails, and literally laying the foundations of infrastructure and energy grid expansion, there simply isn't a place to plug in your electric equipment. So maybe maybe that's possible. This isn't specifically just for electric cars. You can actually plug in electric anything. These days, a lot of machinery, a growing amount of machinery is powered by batteries. So how does the biocharger work? Well, it uses air curtain technology to burn wood and waste in a closed loop system. The resulting heat is converted into electric energy and stored in a connected battery storage module or BSM. That energy can then be used to charge EVs, construction equipment, mining equipment, portable power tools, caravans, you know, motorhomes, pretty much whatever you need. Here's what the company said. While electric machinery becomes increasingly popular in the fight against climate change. Now, I don't think it's just a fight against climate change, guys. I think electric machinery is just simply better. If you've used a really good electric lawnmower, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They said, when it comes to forest management, we must have practical solutions for charging electric machinery away from traditional power sources. The air burners biocharger provides that solution in an economical and environmentally conscious way. To be fair here, guys, if you burn wood, it's not really all that good for the environment. It's not good for you either. In fact, um, smoke from burning wood is really bad for you. And that's one of the key reasons why many cities around the world have banned people from having fires at their homes because it causes a lot of pollution. But in this case, it's a closed loop system. So you don't get that pollution coming out of a chimney. To back up their claims, Air Burners says that some 70 million tons of wood waste are collected annually in the United States alone. Why not turn that 70 million tons of wood waste into electricity? They say more than 50% of that waste is left to open burns or decomposition, which releases particulate matter and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. In contrast, the company claims its closed loop system significantly reduces harmful particulate matter and greenhouse gas emissions compared to open burns. Basically, they're saying, yeah, if you cut down a tree um, to create electricity in this system, it's not particularly good for the environment. But if you're doing it using waste material stuff that's just going to be uh, burnt off anyway or destroyed, uh, left to rot, then this makes sense. So what they're doing is turning what would be waste heat into useful electricity. It probably would make a lot of sense for something like this to be deployed in Australia. We have a lot of bushfires here in Australia. The key reason is because so many trees die, they fall down, um, and there's a lot of undergrowth that is gets old and decomposes, and then that is the perfect recipe 
for a bushfire, which can be devastating. Rolls-Royce Solutions America, which is the power company, not the automotive company that builds cars and is owned by BMW, said this, the biocharger is a unique application for our energy pack battery storage system. That I think just shows how versatile energy storage can be. The biocharger's ability to reduce emissions and generate energy through responsible handling of vegetative waste perfectly aligns with our targets to support our customers with innovative solutions for the transition to the clean power generation. Right now, it's hard to know what the specifications are of this technology, but it's in a phase prototype and it's being used to test charging a 23 ton Volvo crawler electric excavator. So quite a big electric excavator right before that vehicle is launched to the market later this year. Here's some more information from the company. The primary purpose of the air curtain, as you can see here in the diagram, is to create a secondary burn chamber. The air curtain is like a lid covering the opening in a firebox. The particles of smoke rising on the hot gases of the fire are trapped under the air curtain. These smoke particles are then reburned and their size is significantly reduced with this reduced size. They can now escape through the air curtain and appear more like waves of heat than smoke. The result is a very clean burn with opacities well under 10% per EPA method 9 testing as compared to open burning, which typically run at 80% to 100% capacity. So they're saying clearly it does have some emissions, but about 80, approximately 80% 80 less than open air burning. So that's definitely better. Like I said, I'm not really a fan of the idea of cutting down the forest, even, even dead trees, to be honest, to run one of these things. I think what's going to happen if that were, were to happen is people go, oh, yeah, great. Oh, we've cut all the dead ones down now. What do we do? I'll oh, just start cutting down the live ones. I can see that happening personally. So this is not going to work in every aspect for all applications, but in some ways it does make sense because it's true that this could prevent a lot of bushfires if people were to do work, which they're already doing, where we see these massive burn-offs that happen in Australia, they happen in, I know they happen in California, lots of countries around the world do burn-offs. If rather than doing that, we collected them all, collected all that, all that old wood and that old waste and used it to generate electricity, that might make a lot more sense. I'm still not 100% sold on this, though. That said, keen to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.